Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello there, guys. This is Rob from RV Talk Radio. This is episode 80, and uh, yeah, lots of things to talk about. So the big thing I guess I got to talk about, and uh, there'll be some videos on it too, but Sherry and I have bought a home. So uh, it seems that our story is going to be a little bit like uh, the other podcasts, uh, Living the RV Dream, where uh, they actually came off the road and, and uh, bought a home too in Florida. And so uh, anyway, well, I thought we'd tell you a little bit about what it's like to transition from full time to back to a home again and then also tell you some of the plans in the future and things like that so let's move on yes it's true sherry and i are traders i guess and decided not to be full timers anymore so here here's the scoop so we kind of hinted about our situation is sherry and i are both now 56 and uh we kind of got the impression we probably started our full-timing a little too early. So we've been full-timing, we've lived in our RV full-time for 18 months. And uh, so, you know, that's pretty good. We're pretty pleased with that. Uh, The part is we we went from Washington down to Oregon uh, and then down to Arizona. And our kids are down here and we've been sitting here and Shuri's picked up her career down here in a nice company and kind of gets back to kind of normal lifestyle Um, and what was really good about that is we're able to get good health care and dental and vision all that through her work and you know I have my pension and and uh, our company and things like that so uh, anyway but we've been kind of just sitting here so you know the first thing we started asking ourselves is okay we're sitting here uh we don't really have to live in an RV. It would be kind of nice to have some elbow room. So we got to kind of contemplating about it, and we were kind of always keeping in mind that there was a, we, you know, when we found a place or area we wanted to live in, that we would uh, look at buying a home. And we've had a little special nest egg thing set up just for this. And so the logic started hitting us uh, towards November, Thanksgiving times, I guess maybe because of all the family activities and things. And we started looking, and and actually we were kind of happy at seeing what we feel is fairly reasonable costs for homes down here. And so we decided, yep, let's do it. Let's buy a home. And then uh, for the next eight years or so, uh, when we get into our 60s, and we are eligible for our Social Security and Medicare, then maybe we'll either start sunbirding, going up north, uh, or maybe even look at full-timing again. Who knows? Now, this doesn't mean this is the end of RVing. <laughs> no. In fact, our channel goes way back, and we, uh, we've we been doing RV uh, stories and, and adventures and uh, road trips uh, way before we ever went full-timing. So the RV channel outdoor travel channel is going to remain the same um because you know we have lot, that's why it's called outdoor travel channel because it has rving it has road trips it has fishing well i have starting to add fishing and boating and uh, a lot of other um any other kind of outdoor activities that pertain to traveling or rv uh travel too so anyway so um, the only difference is now we have a home and what's really important to us to have that is it also gives us a chance and we bought a house that we could do this to have a studio and so that was really important to us and this is why if you haven't noticed lately some of our videos are actually uh, have Muppets or puppets in them now and uh, which uh, seems to be working out well and getting good reviews and so we're going to continue that however it takes green screen to do that and we've been doing a little bit more green screen what a pain to do green screen when you're in an rv and so uh 
we've been doing the best we can. Lighting's been a real issue, trying to set up the green screen, all the cameras and angles and all that stuff, along with sound and the whole works, has really been challenging. <laughs> but uh, so uh, the other thing I will tell you about is we actually launched two new channels or two new uh, uh, stories or even uh, YouTube channels. And we have other ones too. One of them's called Arizona Talk Radio, and uh, that's going to be a weekly podcast that we're doing that pertains to Arizona living. And that's officially going to be launched in March. Now, it's already online, and if you're listening to podcasts now and you'd like to uh, hear the Arizona one, it's called Arizona Talk Radio. So if you go into your cell phone, go into your software, type in, because it's already in iTunes and, and all that stuff, and uh, just type in Arizona Talk Radio, and there we are, bleep. <laughs> and so uh, our uh, weekly show will be, uh, we're doing a little intro shows now to build up the the media or build up the social media of it. But by March, we'll be doing full-blown shows. And then, so right now, we're randomly doing little intros and kind of experimenting with the ideas. Uh, it's going to talk a, a lot about just our Arizona living and, and the lifestyles and the cool things down here and, and politics and news, things like that, but uh, on a lighthearted um, note with a little bit of redneck to it. Anyway, and the other show <laughs> is kind of different for us. It's not even RV related. It's called The Turds. <laughs> yep, T-E-R-D-S, The Turds, The Turd Family, and it's totally made up of Muppets or puppets and it's basically a Muppet family with the grandma and grandpa which you've seen some examples of it already and you now you kind of explains why we've been doing it we're blending grandma and grandpa into the turd family and uh, there's also a pet monster that's a pet um, Bigfoot and uh, it's going to have stories once a week of uh, family stuff, and it's all for entertainment, fun, humor, the whole works. And it's actually, we got a Facebook set up for that. Uh, we already have a YouTube channel set up and Twitter. So uh, uh, if you want to have a little fun and just have something that's just fun to watch, um, it's just entertainment, just pure old entertainment. It's called The Turds. <laughs> <laughs> the, the website's actually called The Turds, uh, be, uh, spelled T E R D S dot com. So, anyway, uh, <laughs> it's going to be fun to do. And we really can't go full blown into that until we get into the house. And because uh, uh, it's going to take a lot of green screening and uh, uh, so, and special effects and things. So, lots of fun, lots of things going on. So, uh, as far as all of our other thing, even RV Talk uh, Radio, uh, well, I took a week off, if you hadn't noticed, <clears throat> and uh, um, wanted to kind of think about whether we're going to continue the show or not, and I think we will. Um, we might break it down to every other week, um, if need be, but uh, there always seems to be something to talk about in the RV world, <laughs> so uh, we'll just see how it goes, but uh, we're up to episode 80. Uh, we'll see how that goes, and we, of course, we always love you guys' feedback and comments. So, anyway, um, that's some of the new things going on, and the fact that the house is coming up. So, what I want to do is change gears and tell you what it's like, and and I'm also kind of copying what the uh, Higgins did in their show. It's talking about <laughs> what it's like going from an RV back to a house, and it's probably a little different for them. Uh, maybe it's uh, the same but I'll tell you a little bit what we've gone through and one of the big heartaches that we're going through right now which is just driving us crazy and I'll do that in the next module here so let's move on to the next module so finding out that the cost of uh, houses down here weren't too bad and I'm um, and it kind of give you an idea Sherry and I because we're getting older, we have to keep things in mind that we bought a Rambler. No stairs, no upstairs, no second floor. Uh, simple house, 1,700 square foot. It does have a pool, which is not unusual down here in Arizona. So don't go, oh gosh, she's getting fancy. Um, no, it's uh, not that way at all. And anyway, it's a four bedroom home and we have it, want it set up so when grandkids or, grand, or our kids come down to visit, that they have a place to stay and so 
uh, not to mention we need a studio and an office. So uh, two bedrooms, will, uh, one bedroom master, of course. One will be for guests, another will be an office, and another one is actually going to be more of a laundry room, uh, hobby room. So anyway, um, but that that's the funny part. But the hard, the hard part for us is because houses, when they're well-priced and they're just like that, and plus I want a house that has room that allows you to park an RV, so it's got an RV space next to it. Uh, that was obviously uh, ideal for an RVer. <laughs> so uh, when we found this house, we you know, started the process right away. And uh, so we put a bid on the house, and there was, of course, uh, uh, every other person uh, wanted that house too. And it turned out um, we actually kind of met the uh, owner's kids, and uh, older, older kids that were helping them um, it, the lady owned it, lost her husband a year ago, and she's downsizing. Anyway, nice lady. Anyway, so she's having a house built. So one of the things she wanted or needed was um, someone who could rent the house back to her for uh, within the 30 days after closing, uh, waiting to get into her new house. And uh, so it's like, wow, since we, you know, since we we're willing to do that, we actually got the bid too. So they chose our numbers and chose us, and that was cool. And we got the bid on the house and and uh, gone through the process of uh, purchasing. And, and, and just last week, we closed. So we actually own the house now. The sad part is it's like, kind of like Christmas, but you can't open the presents or the stockings. You just have to look at it. <laughs> it's kind of, ooh. So now this is only going to go on for a couple of weeks, uh, and uh, we get you know they pay rent back. They're covering our costs, so we're not losing out. But it's just frustrating because we you know we haven't been in a home for like eight years, and we're really anxious to get back into a home, and uh, we can't. <laughs> so we own a home. We got it all legally. It all works, and uh, not going to happen. So uh, we are settling down in Mesa, Arizona, and uh, we're thrilled to death and. Our, uh, the process of getting moved in will start in a few weeks here. So here's the funny part, and here's the interesting part, as you guys know, we're from Washington State. Well, we kept all of our stuff knowing that someday this would happen. So all of our stuff um, is up in Washington in a storage unit that's a, that's a 10 by 20. And so sometime, and we're gonna wait till, you know, the weather's been something fierce up up north there so we're going to uh, wait for a while before we bring that stuff down and you know we've got some stuff for years if you guys are like our age you'll find out you know, like man I've had that coffee table forever or I've had this couch forever or this bedroom set forever so Sherry and I also have set aside the funding to uh, replace some of that stuff and even though because we told you we're going to have a second bedroom for guests and stuff. Well, we're going to take our master bedroom set that we've had before and move that into the guest room. <coughs> and uh, and we're putting a new one in. So it's kind of exciting because, you know, Sherry and I, every weekend I've been going shopping. And that's a lot more shopping than I can handle. <laughs> but anyway, lots of shopping. So basically, Sherry's getting a new master bedroom set. Me too, but it's she's you know it's, she's having fun and well, i am too and the washer and dryer of course we don't we got rid of ours uh and uh new television we always wanted to get a smart tv we do have one up in storage but we want two tvs anyway so we went ahead uh, costco had a great sale on televisions by the way because of the super bowl and uh so that and then all um, when you live in arizona you also want to invest in uh good yard furniture so those are the things we're replacing so the house will be pretty empty for a while until we go up to Washington uh, which is okay um, and uh, you know our cat and our dog have never had their own yard ever and so it'll be really amazing to see how well they do in a house and Cinder is a water dog if you have noticed and it's going to be quite interesting to see how we're going to keep her out of the pool. I got a feeling there's going to be a new command taught to the dog is no pool. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. 
but uh, she'll be allowed to go at it. But it's like, um, you know, that's just how it is. Uh, that's what filters are for. Anyway, it's uh, our house, our pool, our dog can swim in it. So anyway, uh, uh, if you see some of the videos after this show, you'll start seeing some glimpses of what the new home looks like. And you'll see it's very simple. It's a rambler. Nothing special. Just a nice place to call it quits <laughs> as far as that should, I'm hoping this is the last house we ever ever buy and uh, some of the same frustrations that we're going through the same what the Higgins went through uh, going from an RV back to a house uh, your house starts out very empty and that's how ours will be too and uh, so uh, we're going back to being a part-time or extended RVers so it doesn't change our show at all other than the fact we're not doing everything full-time which should extend the life of our fifth wheel we have no intention of getting rid of it if anything we might downsize it uh, but we'll see I mean because this is a monstrous uh, RV uh, or fifth wheel and we did that because we're living on it so we may get to the obvious uh, change of our uh, we don't need one quite as big if we're just doing one month you know trips and stuff like that uh, but we've got it already. We've had it for three years. We've got it kind of uh, set up the way we like it. Plus, we got Wi-Fi Ranger in it, and we got the solar and all that. So we're not in a hurry to get rid of it, and we have a place to store it on our property. So that's the good part. Now, the second part we got to deal with is our boat, <laughs> and it's not in the water right now. And uh, when it gets warmer, we're going to put it in Lake Sororo. And uh, so we're hoping to have a lot of great shows. I gotta get some fishing in. I gotta learn how to fish down here. So we're hoping to get some really good fishing, or at least <laughs> entertaining fishing, uh, of on our channel. We're looking forward to that. So anyway, uh, that's kind of the plan. That's kind of what's going on. It's gonna be a really busy February for Sherry and I. So um, that's kind of one of the reasons why we skipped one week on this show to. Uh, kind of regroup we had a lot of things going on and uh, I may actually skip a few weeks during uh, February uh, keeping the same amount of uh, you know the episodes in order but they might get spread out by every other week just because uh, time is of the essence right now just being uh, uh, <laughs> I just can't keep up so yeah that's this good so anyway let's move on I got some other things to talk about I have recently made some observations that uh, I'd like to pass it on because I really think it's a good fitness thing that should be considered and it's really a, a just a good incentive type thing and I've watched Sherry go through it and I've watched a neighbor or a friend of ours go through it but you know these new Fitbits now there's different kinds of them so I'm just going to say the general word Fitbits they're little like watches you put on your arm that you know kind of keeps track of your how much um, movement how much walking you've done things like that and it integrates into the website and you can have friends uh, you can challenge each other and stuff like that so I've watched you know, Sherry um, constantly saying well I'm trying to get my 6,000 steps in today and then uh, our neighbor just recently got another version of uh, like a Fitbit and uh, they uh, she's uh, been walking a lot because she's just got this thing that just uh, just kind of turned on a little light and uh, like the rest of us and you know seen me and Sherry we're all kind of fighting the weight issue uh, just jumped on board and started challenging herself to 6,000 steps every last month it was there 5,000 this month is every six uh, 6,000 a day and she says that she's actually already lost 10 pounds like Woohoo! That's um, trust me. I mean, uh, to lose any weight, uh, whether it's one ten or fifty, uh, it's uh, uh, sh uh, should be an applause. Anyway, so this is like several times now that I've seen very good. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but results I guess would be of seeing people have gotten that tool or resource. And it's turned out to be a real positive thing. 
And it's not like somebody's haunting you. It's not like you got a trainer going, hey, you're getting fat. You need to exercise and go, go, go. And do, you know, 1,001, 1,002. <laughs> and the little Fitbit is just kind of a friendly little thing that kind of, it kind of turns your own, um, uh, I don't know, turns on the little button in your head says maybe I should start doing something and I can't explain why it does it but uh, I really I, I got to start saying or at least recommend that if you've been thinking about getting one of those things get one it seems to be a real positive thing and it seems to be um, I can't you know I don't think it's going to like buy one today and you're going to lose five pounds every month so everybody's a little different, but it seems to drive people really well um, to at least start walking more. So anyway, uh, if you get a chance to get yourself a Fitbit or been thinking about getting one, I highly urge that you do because uh, even I'm starting to think about getting one. So <laughs> anyway, just a recommendation. So uh, there you go. And uh, of course, there's another little thing I've always wanted to get and I finally got it <laughs> and uh, but I still can't use it <laughs> it's uh, driving me crazy so we you know sure I told you we've been shopping a lot so uh, with the house there's a few things that we wanted to get one of the things I've been dreaming about getting and also getting back is up in Washington I have a smoker and uh, uh, it's a good one and I just I haven't used it in years because it's you know we've been in an apartment or traveling so it's in storage and I finally got one of those and if you haven't heard of them before it's called a Traeger and I finally waited till uh, there's a sale at Costco Costco has a custom-made Traeger just for them that has a few extra bills and whistles they just call it the Cadillac of what they call the 22 there's a 20 22 anyway they have a junior and all that stuff and they make a mobile version which I see a lot of people is a handful of folks in the park here that have triggers triggers are electric they use pellets and they're a smoker um, and they also uh, can be just like a big oven and they are incredible machines they can cook some really cool stuff so I'm really hoping to share with you some really amazing meals that I'm hoping to make in the future. And one of the other things I was really looking forward to is I'd like to start making beer. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you get old and retired, you're know, just like, oh, you can start thinking about this kind of stuff. So these are the kind of things that one of the benefits of having a home um, and uh, I... I've kind of missed some of that kind of stuff and also our business we also have uh, some uh, product things that we want to do uh, that you just can't do from an RV uh, so you know we've always been kind of a service company uh, and uh, we own Cutting Edge Enterprises LLC and uh, which has just been pretty much the uh, video kind of stuff and a few products and uh, affiliate stuff there but we also are uh, eager to create a product and so one of the next things that we're uh, launching too is uh, laser engraving uh, um, hardware that we're going to be purchasing for the company to create some stuff that uh, we can take to art shows and stuff like that um, so we're kind of looking forward to that so a lot of a lot of things going on a lot of changes you know when you're traveling like we did it's been a a good time to think things through or think things over or what you want to do with your life and um, I guess I, I, I could say you know I, you always hear me terrorizing these poor Millennials that are out here uh, trying to uh, live full-time in RVs and, and kind of uh, cheat life a little bit um, or just the opposite and somebody depends on how you look at it um, but it is a good opportunity to see the world a little bit and to contemplate because you're going to meet a lot of people and a lot of businesses and ideas and regions and climates and all that stuff to uh, help you decide what you really want to do in life um, typically you may not be a traveler all your life almost everybody I've heard that's traveled one way or another whether a hike you know, 
hiking across America or the international or RVing or whatever they're doing or sailing, eventually they move on to something else and and look back at that as a great adventure. And uh, But during that time was a good time to evaluate what you feels best for you and what kind of uh, things you like to do. So I've kind of looked at this 18 months as the opportunity of like, what do I still want to do and what do I don't want to do anymore? And of course, when you get older, you get kind of more uh, clear about what you do and do not like. And uh, so anyway, I always... Um, I, always, I always admire that our opportunity to be full timers, um, but I am very anxious of getting grounded again so I can get back to some projects that I want to get done. And Sherry's got some things that she'd like to do too. And uh, you know, when she's working uh, every day and stuff, uh, you know, to live in an RV is, um, you know, you put a full day in the work and then kind of live in small quarters stuff uh she deserves better than that for me as far as i'm concerned and so uh she's excited to have you know the comforts and you know a chance you know i have a nice pool or be able to take a bubble bath and relax uh, uh of course you know at our age she deals with the migraines once in a while and stuff like that and sometimes it's really difficult in an rv uh to be comfortable um, especially when you're not feeling well. <laughs> and uh, so I'm really looking forward to getting her back in a house, and I'm looking forward to it too. And and we're still looking forward to all the great stories we'll have for you in the future. And, of course, we're looking forward to all the new projects too. So, oh, man, uh, there will be lots to talk about. And a lot of stuff that um, we will talk about in this show will also bleed over to uh, Arizona Talk Radio too. So uh, that will that'll cover a lot of things like uh, uh, places to go, places to eat, uh, lifestyles, um, lifestyle down here along the border, uh, d you know, there's different issues than most people have in other states. So yeah, you know, it's a great show and I, I would like to invite you to go check it out. I'd like to uh, urge everybody to take the time to contact us and uh, Send us your comments and feedback and some things you'd like us to review in the RV world. We would appreciate it. Uh, we keep up on what some of the other channels are doing and stuff like that. Uh, they're all doing some great stuff, and we always uh, tip our hats to them. Once again, we always kind of focus on the life uh, lifestyle of RVing and not so much products and services. And so, uh, anyway, uh, if you want to contact us, uh, just go to rvtalkradio.com go to the contact page and you can go right there and it's private and you can shoot us a note there or you can just directly email me at rob at rvtalkradio.com we'd love to hear from you the other thing is uh, feel free to go to our facebook uh, rvtalkradio.com or just rvtalkradio on facebook and just go to the message button at the top and you can shoot us a note there love to hear from you love to hear the feedback uh, we've got something uh uh, constructive to say maybe or even uh, uh, <laughs> all we ask is be professional if you have something uh, that you want to uh, bring up that uh, you don't like and uh, we just ask you to be professional and we certainly will listen to you and see if we can do a better job at certain items and we uh, yeah we do appreciate that but we'd love to hear from you and boy we love it uh, if you're in Arizona and you happen to uh, uh, have some time to visit or like to have a cup of coffee uh, just contact us and we'll find a way to meet up with you uh, i think the do it justice folks just the other day contacted us we almost caught up with them uh but uh we'll catch them in the next rebound i think they're over in uh, uh new mexico right now and they're kind of right near us and they will be coming into arizona and we're looking forward to meeting them but yeah if you happen to be in the area give us a holler sherry and i would love to catch up with you uh, and uh, trade notes and stories and <laughs> all that. So it's always fun. Uh, it's so funny to see what uh, whatever you know all the different RVers are going through or uh, some of their ideas. And uh, yeah, so we uh, we really like to hear from you. 
I would also like to take the time to uh, mention our sponsor, which is goodmusicradio.com, which is an internet radio station that we've created. It's uh, awesome. We uh, continuously add greatest hits to it, past and present. You can listen to it 24-7. Very, very little talk. Very, very little commercials. And uh, it's great. You can hook it right up to your uh, your cell phone, which mine, mine always makes noise when I'm doing a show. Uh, anyway, or you can play it on your PC. Uh, it's just good music. At nighttime, it calms down a little bit to more easy listening, so you can sleep to it and have good tunes. Uh, they're all toe tappers, and there's uh, hopefully many times when you're listening to the shows that you'll realize, uh, wow, I haven't heard that in a long time, and that was a good tune. And uh, so it's called goodmusicradio.com. Um, you can go right to the site. There's a little link in there that says download mobile app, and absolutely free. There's no cost whatsoever. Uh, if you're a uh, business, uh, RV business, or it doesn't even have to be RV, uh, a business or a service that you'd like to advertise in that show, just give us a holler and find something we can work out for you. So yeah, uh, our, um, so yeah, check it out. It's goodmusicradio.com. So I wanted to brush up everybody a little bit of um, some facts about Arizona that you may not have heard about. And so the most recent one that came out in the news down here is um, Arizona is known for one of the top areas for the worst drivers. <laughs> Boy, that ought to make you want to come down here, huh? So yeah, uh, apparently uh, all the bad drivers come down here and, and live. <laughs> and I got to admit that it can be quite intimidating. Now, the roads down here are awesome. And if you haven't had a chance to drive, try to get around in Arizona, it's actually very easy. But I don't know why everybody's in such a hurry. And so uh, I think the biggest thing you'll notice a lot is the tailgaters. So uh, I guess depending on what you're driving down here, I you know try to move a lane over just let those guys shoot on by but if you're in the middle lane of a three lane road uh they'll pass you either on the right or left they don't care and so yeah and uh i think there's actually a little bit more of a road rage down here too and i don't understand that because i've been into places like seattle haven't driven in la but i've been close passing through it and 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 i've been to san diego oh my gosh that's a mess Anyway, uh, and I've been from San Diego up to L.A. Um, a little bit, and those were nasty. Those were just bad traffic. And, and I could see where people might lose it a little bit here, but I don't see it as bad here as traffic jams as I do, especially from Seattle area. So uh, just I thought I'd give you a heads up when you come down here. The roads are awesome. The drivers are <laughs> mediocre. <laughs> So you have to be a good defensive driver down here, as I, we kind of noticed. Um, just a lot of impatient people. I don't know why. Um, I always tell people I just like to get from point A to point B alive and from B to A alive, and I'm pretty happy with that. But uh, uh, I don't know what causes it. There's a lot of things that go on nowadays I don't understand from protesting to standing behind presidents and things like that and I, I, I'm not getting it and I, I guess it's because I'm getting to be a grumpy old man as some people have called me <laughs> it's so I guess that's okay um, but yeah patience people but yeah when you get down to Arizona be a little bit of, more of a defensive driver but also realize that getting around here is a little easier than other cities because it's a you know they use a grid kind of layout here and so it's a lot easier to get around and find your way around the other thing is kind of hard as you'll notice is when you're looking for stores a little harder to see the stores because they don't have signage sticking out in the road like other cities so you can be going by a complex and not see half the stores that are in the complex you almost have to drive into the complex and go look at them that way because uh, uh, the nice thing is this place isn't scattered with signs everywhere. Um, it's really hard uh, to see. It's really better to use your GPS, use uh, Google, or use uh, 
uh, something like that to find certain stores you're looking for uh, because it's really hard to see them from the road. In fact, I find it nice that Sherry and I will rotate driving once in a while so I can actually see, like if we're going from here to our daughter's, which is about 20 miles away, uh, when I let Sherry drive once in a while, I can realize, man, there's a lot of stores I didn't know existed along the way because you just can't see the signage. So, uh, yeah, there's just a couple of interesting facts about Arizona driving and Arizona uh, finding certain places or stores or restaurants that you're trying to get to. Uh, but it does look nice, <laughs> and it's you know not as messy, so that's kind of nice. So, any anyway, little facts about Arizona. Well, we're going to wrap this show up here to, uh, for this week. This is uh, been episode 80. Uh, we do uh, appreciate all the well wishes we've gotten about uh, buying a house. Uh, it's going to be quite challenging. Uh, as we go, I'm going to kind of share with you. Cause, uh, we actually, are, actually have met a lot of people that are coming off the road or making this their final uh, destination. And so it's kind of interesting the problems about coming off the road. Just like there's issues about going on the road and becoming a minimal minimalist and things like that so uh as we kind of discover these new issues and uh, uh we'll be sharing that and also we also you know, told you that we need to go up to washington and so we got a, a a road trip of flying up to washington and driving a penske truck down back down here to arizona that should be quite the adventure so it got all kinds of things that are coming up uh, so anyway, I want to thank you very much for listening. Appreciate uh, your patience of uh, we you know, skipped a week here to get to this episode. And we might just do every other week for, uh, um, for the month of February just because it's crazy. And uh, anyway, so we wish everybody uh, uh, that, you know, we're getting out of the winter, getting close to spring. Yay. <laughs> Still got a ways to go. Anyway, I hope everybody's having a good time in their RVs or looking forward to buying an RV. And most of all, we hope everybody's safe out there. So I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Thank you for listening and we'll talk to you in, in episode 81. Talk to you later. Bye now. Hey guys, thanks for listening to RV Talk Radio. Please take the time to subscribe and listen to or some of our prior shows. Once again, thanks, and don't forget to give us a shout. We love hearing from you.